Hey, how can you five here? Nathan Triss. Nathan? I don't call myself Nathan. Nathan. Ever. End dog. Um, <laughs> this. <laughs> Sorry. Continue, end dog. <laughs> we are the wildest kids you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, someday your brain could break for you. Why is it breaking? What is it breaking? Cars. Um, oh, right. Okay, German researchers, and they don't say from where, just... Just German. In Germany. Yeah, that tiny, um, tiny little country. So what they <laughs> I like that Germans are awesome, but they Leave Germany alone. scientists. Wait, what? They... German, Germany has scientists. I know, but they only call oh, them go, German scientists? I mean, come on. Here we go. Uh, oh, the Technical University of Berlin. There we go. Anyway, let me get to the crux of the article. The crux. So, what they did is they hooked up um, uh, EEG devices to participants, mm -hmm. guinea pigs, um, and then <laughs> they, they, guinea pigs, they got them to like do a driving simulation and brake, and they actually found that the electrical signals in the brain for that kind of signal braking, like, like, oh shit, I need to yeah. brake, oh, okay. were seen 130 milliseconds before drivers actually hit the brakes. Hells yeah! And that, and that at, say, I think that at about 100 Sounds kilometers an hour, that worked out to they braked uh, four meters earlier. Wow! Which you know could that's that that's could a be big the distance. Could be the difference between hitting something and not hitting something. Yeah. Um. Wow. So that's basically what they did, and so the obvious um, application for this is: imagine if while you're driving, you had a device that's hooked up to your head. A bit like there's a lot of very standard ones out there today. Oh, yeah. Today, like NeuroSky and Emotive headsets. Like Only $99 if you guys want to get one. Really cheap. Really recommend getting one. I, I don't know why them. they don't just use that. Like, they should just use that and just. Well, it should just be an open source. Someone needs Resident to jump on it. Anyway. But anyway, um, so yeah, yeah, hook them up to your brain and then just have the car break for you before Jeez. you actually want to break yet. And that, that, that's just the beginning. I mean, it, <laughs> just having that go there, I mean, you could still have a lot more put into it. Yeah. The car, I mean, if you, if people get into that habit saying that sell it as a safety device, but by actually having your brain hooked up to the car, combine it with, you know, Google driverless cars and a few yeah, of the I other things. That. I mean, geez. Apparently, China has actually had more driving hours with driverless cars than Google's. Oh, um, go China. Just Chinese researchers. Did, did you know one of the driverless cars actually crashed yesterday? Wasn't it a human driver at fault? It was a human driver at fault, yeah. yes. <laughs> but that's not the headline. The headline is that the it crashed. It crashed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I, I quite like this. I, I very, very like putting the brain in the car. I mean, that, that's going to be an, another way that it's going to go. I mean, just yeah. doing everything. I mean, the fact that there's consumer electronics out there now that measure what your brain's doing. I mean, and this is just the beginning. Yeah. yeah. What we're saying today in the in the car, like, it just driving me somewhere. It's we're gonna look back on this time and think how retarded it is that yeah. humans were allowed to drive cars by themselves, so that like I could literally at any point I could turn the car into opposing traffic and just kill people. There was a great um like bullets and two ton metal. Things. Exactly. What is this? That there was a great example that um, that came up with that saying that it's bad UI design that by doing that I could kill <laughs> myself and all my family. <laughs> it's a really bad yeah. user interface. It's really primitive and, and it, like <laughs> um, Google saying that they drive us cars are really pretty pretty good. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm, but well, it needs to be open. But even if they're perfect and like they're just massively intelligent, there's, there's absolutely no variable that could tra crash them ever. Yeah, it's still going to take like decades, I think, before. Oh, widespread Undecade. acceptance. Yeah, before you get widespread acceptance and people are like, oh yeah, of course my car drives yeah. for me. But I think the idea of having a human behind the wheel and having human controlling this giant weapon is just horrible. <laughs> well, that's what we are moving away from. It's... I mean, the fact that it can break, the fact it can do everything there, removing any decisions that are from you. Yeah. I mean, that's what the road rules are. It's is horrible. It just follow these, don't do anything else. And this is along the lines too, that's what I was going to say. Um, there was a study done a while back that showed that um, when we make decisions, um, yeah. we make them actually seven seconds before we're consciously aware of making that decision. Yeah. And, and the instant thing we jump to is like, oh, well, what you can just hook up a device, device to your brain and you, when you want something or you make the decision that you want this, yeah. you have, you know, the computer or whatever can provide it to you. Yeah, quicker. It's seven seconds before you're consciously aware of it or like at the point that you want it. Yeah. Which is what Google wants to do eventually. Like you shouldn't have to search for information. They just want no, to give it to you when you want it. Directly to you. Which especially with the cars. Awesome. Hmm. But at that point, oh, who's controlling who? Me. It's kind. Of, it's kind of like making the whole lack of free will very visible. Yeah. Like the no technology one. saying you have no free will. Yeah. 
just seven seconds earlier than we thought we had our freedom. Interesting. <laughs>